Greetings and welcome to episode 7 of the Math Olympiad lecture series. Today we will be exploring the subject of quadratics and delving particularly into Vieta's formulas. The objective of this lesson will be for students to be able to solve problems involving the roots of quadratic equations as well as to be able to apply Vieta's formulas to solve problems involving quadratic roots. Quadratics are polynomial functions of degree 2. There are four forms that students have to be familiar with. First, the general form of a quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c. At the lower secondary level, most students will be familiar with the process of factorization and expressing quadratic functions in this factorized form to find the roots of a quadratic expression. These roots are often represented by the Greek alphabets alpha and beta. There is also a complete the square form that is very handy for finding the turning points of a quadratic function. This will be covered in greater detail in episode 8. Quadratics can also be represented graphically. The roots alpha and beta can be seen graphically as the x-intercepts of the quadratic function, which is where the curve meets the x-axis. Today, we'll be looking closer at the factorized forms and how we can play with the roots of a quadratic using Vieta's formulas. But before we get started on Vieta, let's look at a question on the root of a quadratic equation. Question 1. Given that alpha is a root of the quadratic equation x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals to 0, find the value of part 1, alpha squared plus 1 over alpha squared, part 2, alpha cubed plus 1 over alpha cubed, and part 3, alpha cubed minus 15 alpha plus 2018. Please pause the video here to give this question a good try. Now since alpha is a root, we can substitute x to be equals to alpha. And rearranging the quadratic equation, we can form alpha plus 1 over alpha to give us 4. For part 1, what we can do is that we can square both sides of this equation. On the left side, alpha plus 1 over alpha squared will give us alpha squared plus 2 plus 1 over alpha squared. And that will give us 16 on the right hand side. Shifting the 2 over to the right hand side, we will get alpha squared plus 1 over alpha squared to give us 14, which is the answer for part 1. Part 2 is very similar to part 1. What we do now is we cube both sides. So on the left side, we will get alpha cubed plus 3 alpha plus 3 over alpha plus 1 over alpha cubed. And on the right hand side, we get 4 cubed, which is 64. Rearranging the terms, we will get alpha cubed plus 1 over alpha cubed to be equal to 64 minus 3 times of alpha plus 1 over alpha, which we have known that is 4 at the beginning. So after subtraction, that will give us 52, which is the answer to part 2. For part 3, we first make alpha square the subject. Alpha square equals to 4 alpha minus 1. We then multiply alpha throughout of the original quadratic equation. That gives us alpha cubed minus 4 alpha square plus alpha equals to 0. After substituting equation 1 into equation 2, we can simplify it and get alpha cubed minus 15 alpha plus 4. That is very similar to what we want. To get a constant term of 2018, we just add 2014 to both sides. That will tell us that alpha cubed minus 15 alpha plus 2018 is equal to 2014. So the answer is part 1 is 14, part 2 is 52, and part 3 is 2014. Did you get it? Now let's get back to Vieta's formulas. Since we know that ax squared plus bx plus c, the general form of a quadratic, can also be expressed in its factorized form, a times of x minus alpha times x minus beta, we can expand the factorized form and compare the coefficients on both sides. The coefficients of the x terms, on the left side we have b, on the right side we have negative a times of alpha plus beta. Rearranging this, we will get the sum of roots alpha plus beta to be equals to minus b over a. 
if we compare the constant terms on the left side, we have C, and on the right-hand side, we have A times of alpha times of beta. That tells us that the product of roots alpha beta is equal to C over A. Now to apply Vieta's formulas. Have a look at question 2. Given that the roots of y equals to x squared plus 3x minus 6 are alpha and beta, such that alpha is less than beta, find the value of part 1, alpha squared plus beta squared, part 2, alpha to the fourth power plus beta to the fourth power, and part 3, alpha minus beta. Please pause the video here to give this question a good try. A typical strategy employed by students would be to set y equals to 0 and try to solve x squared plus 3x minus 6 equals to 0. However, any attempts to try to factorize this equation to find the roots alpha and beta will only be met by failure. It turns out that there are no integer solutions to this quadratic equation. This is when we can turn to Vieta's formulas. From the coefficients, we can get a equals to 1 b equals to 3, and c equals to negative 6. This gives us a sum of roots alpha plus beta to be negative 3, and the product of roots alpha times beta to be negative 6. For part 1, to find the sum of square of roots, we can consider the square of the sum of roots. Alpha plus beta squared is equal to alpha squared plus 2 alpha beta plus beta squared. Rearranging this equation, we will get alpha squared plus beta squared to be equal to the sum of roots squared minus 2 times the product of roots. Substituting the numbers in, we will get 21. Now there is an alternative solution, which I'm not going to go through, but I'm just going to leave here for your reference. In part 2, we can consider the square of the sum of squares. Rearranging the equation, we get alpha to the fourth power plus beta to the fourth power equals to alpha squared plus beta squared, whole thing squared, minus 2 times of alpha beta squared. Plugging in the numbers, we will get 369 as the final answer. In part 3, we consider alpha minus beta squared. This will give us alpha squared minus 2 alpha beta plus beta squared. Rearranging the terms, we will get alpha plus beta squared minus 4 times of alpha beta. When we sub in the values here, we will get 33. The tricky part comes when we square root both sides. There will be a plus minus. However, because this question initially told us that alpha is less than beta, we reject the positive root and take the answer as negative square root of 33. So the answer is 21, 369 and negative square root of 33 respectively. Did you get the answer? Moving on to question 3. Let A, B and C be the lengths of the three sides of a triangle. Given that A and B are the roots of this quadratic equation, x squared minus open bracket C plus 6 close bracket times of x plus 6 open bracket C plus 3 close bracket equals to 0, find the value of the largest angle in this triangle. Pause the video here to give this question a good try. The approach would be to tackle the algebra component first. Looking at the quadratic equation, we can get the sum of roots a plus b to be equal to c plus 6, and the product of roots a b to be equal to 6c plus 18. Next, we consider the sum of square of roots a square plus b square. After some simplification, we will simply get c square. Having established that a square plus b square equals to c square, we can conclude that this triangle is a right-angled triangle by the converse of Pythagoras' theorem. Hence, the largest angle is 90 degrees. So, did you get the answer? Now, while today's lessons were focused on Vieta's formulas for quadratic equations, his formulas do not end here. They are also applicable for cubic powers and higher. What I will do is include a link to an addendum in the info section for a more complete list of formulas of common expressions, not just for quadratic equations, but also for cubic, quartic, and as well as the general polynomial.
Here are today's extension problems. Solution to Lecture 6 problems have been updated into the info section of the previous video. Problems 1 and 2 today will be testing your knowledge for the general manipulation of roots. Furthermore, problems 3 and 4 will test your application of Vieta's formulas. Answers will be placed in the info section once Lecture 8 is uploaded. We have come to the end of Episode 7. In the next lecture, we will be looking deeper into quadratics, focusing on the technique and application of completing the square. Do stay tuned by subscribing to the channel. Meanwhile, have a good day of learning. Thank you.